Good morning and welcome to Mission Control Houston and Space Station Live. Although we're coming to the end of, the bus of a busy week for the Expedition 36 crew, there's still more to come tomorrow with the launch of the Japanese Kunatori H2 transfer vehicle number four from the Tanegashima Space Center in Japan. That's scheduled for 2.48 p.m. Central Time. But in the meantime, the International Space Station Flight Control Room, the uh, control team is here in the Space Station Flight Control Room watching over all of the crew's activities. Flight Director Tony Sakachi is leading them today and Anna Fisher is assisting as Capcom. The Expedition 36 crew is now more than halfway through their day, which began at 1 a.m. Central Time. They are Russian Commander Pavel Vinogradov, U.S. Engineers, or Flight Engineers Chris Cassidy and Karen Nyberg, European Space Agency Flight Engineer Luca Parmitano, and Russian Flight Engineers Alexander Misurkin and Vyotr Yurchikin. Cassidy, Vinogradov, and Misurkin launched into space on March 28th and docked a few hours later, so they've now spent 126 days in space. Nyberg, Parmitano, and Yurchikin followed in their footsteps on May 28th, so they've now spent 65 days in space and at the space station. Together, the crew is currently orbiting 260 miles above the South Pacific Ocean and heading towards the coast of Chile. This week has been a long one for the crew since they didn't get much of a weekend thanks to the arrival of the Russian transfer vehicle Progress 52 on Saturday. That vehicle brought almost three tons of supplies and equipment when it docked to the station's piers docking compartment at 9.26 p.m. Central and the Russian members of the crew and Commander Pavel Vinogradov in particular have been working steadily to unpack it since the hatches between the two vehicles were open on Sunday. Meanwhile, the crew members on the U.S. side of the space station have spent much of their week getting ready for the next vehicle scheduled to visit, the HTV-4. Its launch at 2.48 p.m. tomorrow will begin a week-long journey to the space station, culminating in its berthing at 6.29 a.m. Central on August 9th. Flight engineers Karen Nyberg and Chris Cassidy will be in charge of capturing it with the space station's robotic arm. As you can see here, how that uh, activity will work. And then they'll bring it in for a berthing to the Harmony node. They've been practicing for the uh, that task all week with the uh, station's robotic work stations inside. Another activity that took up a good deal of time this week was the ocular health experiment. That's part of a new effort to gather data on the effects that long stays in space have on astronauts' vision. Over the course of the week, Nyberg and flight engineer Luca Parmitano each performed regular eye chart exams of their eyes, checked the pressure in their eyes with tonometers, and looked inside their eyes with fundoscopes and ultrasounds. They're the first to participate in this new study and will be doing such checkups every month while they're in space. They started in June, so this was their second round of exams. The equipment they used was delivered by SpaceX 2 earlier this year, and the experiment is expected to last about four years in all. Nyberg and Parmitano were also taking part in other studies that looked at various aspects of astronaut health this week. They've both been on special diets for all or part of the week as part of the Pro-K study, which is aimed at determining whether changes in an astronaut's diet can help decrease the amount of bone loss they experience during long stays in space. And every morning right after they wake up and every night before they've gone to sleep, they've performed runs of the reaction self-test experiment, which is aimed at trying out a way for astronauts to objectively assess whether fatigue might affect their performance in space. Nyberg did some work yesterday getting the In Space 3 experiment set up, and today she's starting a new run in that experiment. It looks at how magnetic fluids are influenced by magnetic fields and microgravity, which could help engineers here on the ground design structures such as bridges and buildings to better withstand earthquakes. And both the U.S. side of the space station and the Russian side have been doing some spacewalk-related work this week, with Cassidy and Parmitano continuing their efforts to help teams on the ground troubleshoot the issue that Parmitano experienced during his spacewalk last month, where a water leak developed in the suit and made it necessary for the spacewalkers to end their day early. Cassidy spent some time in the Quest airlock today, in fact, on an activity referred to as scrubbing the water loops on the, their spacesuits. That's part of the work necessary to keep the suits clean between spacewalks and is also part of the continuing troubleshooting effort. 
Meanwhile, on the Russian side of the station, flight engineers Alexander Misurkin and Fyodor Yurchikin are making preparations for their spacewalk on August 16th. They'll continue work started on their previous spacewalk together to prepare the, for the station uh, to prepare the station for the arrival of the Russian multipurpose laboratory module. Today, they're gathering tools for that, and that's what's going on in space this week. This is Mission Control, Houston.